A ray of light across the night pierces my heart. A ray of light is taking flight to the stoniness in my heart. Sunshine never seems so pretty, air never smells so sweet. Sunshine never seems so pretty, air never smells so sweet. Being an unsuccessful university student, I, I found that I was um, uh, unfulfilled as, as an academic type person and that I really wanted to um, uh, <laughs> find fulfillment in creative things. Even, even uh, you know, as a student, I was writing. I, I, I spent hours and hours writing poetry, stories, songs, plays, all sorts of stuff. Uh, and I found myself sort of um, moving in a creative way but without any outlets at all which is fr so frustrating for me and I decided at university that I really didn't want just to be a, a nine-to-fiver I wanted to be a person who made their living from uh, their creative talents and abilities so um, as a Christchurch schoolboy third fourth fifth form I, um, I was greatly inspired by Bob Dylan a great lyricist a person, a passionate person, and a compassionate person, someone in, uh, interested in social issues and truth. And, uh, you know, I, as a teenager, this, this was my greatest source of, of, um, of values and, and, and truth and uh, uh, sort of uh, motivation all came from this one man, Bob Dylan. You might like to learn the words of this song, which goes like this. I've changed, I've changed, I've changed, I've changed, I've changed, I've changed, I've changed. oh lordy, I've changed. I guess my inspiration as a musician now is my Christian faith, you know, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. I read the Bible every day, I pray every day, and really this is the, the source and inspiration of my music. And without that, um, I don't think I would be a, a full-time musician, because it's, it's something which uh, uh, guides and directs my whole life, and uh, it's part and parcel of the, uh, the whole uh, the music thing for me. So, um, although Dylan was the, the prime mover for me in the 60s, the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the motivator now is Jesus. And I really am singing about him in concert. I'm sharing my Christian faith through music. I'm, I'm sharing songs which express different aspects of my walk with Christ. Uh, and I want to challenge people too, to a similar sort of thing. You know, in the 60s I was a pretty lost youth, really was going nowhere fast. Uh, as a university student, I, I was, I was uh, tackling the issues of the day, but with very little success. 
because I, I didn't, I was grasping in a void and I came to the conclusion that this world was utterly doomed and it was only uh, a few years later that I came to realize that um, the world is not doomed but only through um, hope in uh, Jesus Christ. is my shepherd I shall not want He makes me lie down in green pasture He leads me beside the still waters He restores my soul He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake And even though I walk Through the valley of the shadow of death I will feel no evil For you are with me Your rod and your staff They come from me You prepare the table before me In the presence of my enemies You anoint my head with oil My cup overflows And surely goodness and mercy Shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for I dropped down to university. I was at Canterbury University, just across the way here, and uh, I was going nowhere fast. I, uh, I had no goal. I couldn't see myself completing this uh, Bachelor of Arts degree. Uh, my life had no real purpose that I could fathom, and so I dropped down to university. I hit the road. I piled all my possessions into my 1936 Chev and uh, found myself on the Bay of Islands three days later. Um, I eventually got a, a, a wine waiter's job at the Waitangi Hotel. Went through a whole series of um, job situations, uh, relationship situations, travelled a tremendous amount and um, uh, found myself asking questions of people, why they believe what they believed, um, uh, what their religious beliefs were. I was really keen to find out if life actually had any meaning or not. and. Um, I eventually met two Christians in 1972. One was um, uh, James K. Baxter, and my meeting with him was quite significant. Uh, six weeks later, he, he died in an Auckland flat, and I, I found that a significant event, event that I'd met him a few day, a few weeks rather before he died. Another Christian was a, uh, uh, became a, a Christian a girlfriend of mine. And, um, uh, she, um, she challenged my misconceptions about Christianity and, and the Christian walk. And eventually uh, I, I became a Christian in 1975. So it was a, from the time of dropping out of uh, university to the time of 
receiving Jesus as my saviour in 1975, that's five years. So it was a five year search for truth and there were lots of signposts along the way. When I became a Christian, it really gave a focus to my music and I met um, so many uh, key musicians at this particular church that I attended and I suddenly found that I had an outlet for my music, a focus for the music and it just flourished under, under this new situation. And um, that was really the start of, uh, start of music for me because I had something to sing about, I had a focus for it and uh, it was just a wonderful outlet whereas up until that time I had no outlet for my music. What's it like in concert? Is it uh, easy to be honest? Honest about who you are? Well, um, when I was at Teachers College, I was at Teachers College for three years, um, we were encouraged, I remember one of the um, lecturers at Teachers College encouraging us to be ourselves. You might not care for the grease in my hair all the way that I pick out my clothes. You might not care for the way that I sing Sounds like there's stuff up my nose You might think that my wires is loose That might be true as can be <laughs> But I am your eternal brother, brother Better take good care of me I as a performer now, I find that um, uh, I have to be myself. I can't try and pour, portray an image of someone that I'm not. It's just such hard work and it becomes very stressful. Beating down. Take two. <laughs> sun is, sun is beating down. Should have been E minor chord there. E minor. Okay, take three. <laughs> I'm endeavouring just to be myself. Um, and uh, not pre present any type of image. I want to be real. This is not part of the psalm. This is me just warming up the harmonica. Oh, if you lean on your understanding, you will fall down. Uh, guitar solo. I don't want to be a performer as such. I just want to be a person who is sharing their Christian faith through music, and I want it to be as real as possible. You know. This is a song about your favorite topic, repentance. Repentance has a heavy sounding ring to it, but it's one of the keys to success in the Christian walk. You can't become a Christian unless you first come to God and say, Lord, I, I can't make it on my own. I need your help. I'm a sinner. I fall on my knees before the Father. They're confessing the sins that claw me. My eyes are drenched with the tears of repentance. And in the flowing, the tears have set me free. I have rained such fists before, you know, in anger. And I've grappled with the overwhelming love shown to me by my heavenly Father, who shut his love for me, who sent the dove. Yes, I bow before the Father's throne and worship In the knowledge of His compassion and mercy Ah, but I can't bear that bright vision of glory As the shackles of my life are cut free I've now broken the bonds of self-pity and rejoicing, claim the Lord as my King. I have reached up through the veils of the darkness, and my crippled heart.
begins to laugh and sing Yes, I open up my heart to your father For you know the inmost part of me You reach out a forgiving hand that softly touches me And my inward gaze is suddenly set free You mean the trials of this earthly life The preparation for your kingdom you design from the first You mean I can rejoice with you forever Yahweh No more blindness, no more hunger, no more thirst Yes, I open up my heart to your Father Confessing the sins that claw me my heart releases in waves of freedom And my heart strings the songs of liberty Liberty with songs of liberty Songs of liberty Songs of liberty With songs of liberty Repentance is is utterly basic to the to the Christian walk. Uh, uh, unless you're born again, unless you admit that you have a sinful nature, you know, you, you're wasting your time. You see, Genesis tells us about the situation of us as human beings, and it explains that uh, we were created uh, perfect in a perfect situation, but we were given free will. And God gave us free will, and uh, he, taught, he, he laid down the, the guidelines for us, but we blew it. Adam and Eve blew it. And we're descended from Adam and Eve, and for this reason, we have inherent in our nature uh, is this 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 willfulness, this uh, this self determination, this this sinful nature, if you want to express it like that. Uh, but God has provided for a way for us to be free from the sinful nature. But we have to recognize this sinful nature for what it is is uh, something which come between comes between us and God, but um, um, Jesus Christ has paid the, the price for us. He's, he's died a sinner's death on a cross, and if we receive Jesus wholeheartedly, then we can be free from the power and the stain of sin. To follow Jesus is costly. It's, it's not easy. It requires a wholehearted commitment, which is very difficult to get across to people, you know. Uh, people will sometimes give it a go, give Christianity a go and find that it fails and so they they become very cynical about the whole exercise. But maybe that's because they haven't really had it adequately explained that to become a follower of Jesus Christ is very costly. And we live in quite remarkable times with the, the incredible development of technology, the um, the incredible number of uh, wars and strife across the face of uh, the world and so on. Uh, the book of Revelation, which is the last book of the Bible, addresses a lot of these things. It describes a lot of uh, uh, things which I see happening in the world now. Uh, for instance, the one world money system. On this tour around New Zealand, I see this word EFTPOS. Uh, everywhere, electronic funds transfer at point of sale. And uh, this is prophesied in the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 13 mentions EFTPOS, not the word, but it talks about a cashless society. And we're moving into this time, and so that's exciting for me as a Christian to see uh, things happening uh, in the world that have been prophesied in Scripture. Jesus Christ is coming back to this world, which has a radical uh, uh, a radical implication for us as human beings 
because we can we can ignore Jesus Christ now but at his return I believe that we cannot ignore him it says that every eye will see him and it also says that the nations will mourn because of him so when Jesus comes back uh, as is prophesied not only in the Old Testament but in the book of Revelation and Jesus himself of course mentioned his return then at that time uh, we'll be faced with the reality of Jesus Christ. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there will be deliverance as the Lord has said among the survivors who real answer that this uh, this world can offer is Jesus Christ There's, there is hope in nobody else this this world is doomed except for Jesus Christ calls on the name of the Lord will be seen hmm. uh, we'll be faced with the reality of Jesus Christ. And that for us as middle class complacent uh, people on the, uh, in the society is gonna be a very difficult time for us. And um, you know, I wanna challenge not only the church, but I wanna challenge those people who uh, don't recognize Jesus, that there is a time coming prophesied in the Old Testament, in the Gospels and in Revelation, when Jesus will come back to this earth and uh, I think people need to uh, recognize that fact. They can deny him now and even ignore him to the point of saying that uh, it's all irrelevant. But on that day, which uh, is mentioned in the book um, Joel in the Old Testament, the day of the Lord, or in Luke's uh, Gospel, chapter 21, where it talks about, um, Je where Jesus says he's coming back in a cloud with power and great glory or in Revelation chapter 19 where it's, it describes his return as Jesus coming back on a white horse um, you know that is just an awesome thing to behold and in concert I, I major on this a lot because it's it it uh, is such an awesome event people need to know about it and uh, I, I feel sorry for those people who uh, who turn their back on Christianity, turn their back on the church, back on Jesus Christ, who will one day have to face Jesus Christ and give an account of their life. And uh, I want to encourage people to examine themselves, how they will stand before Jesus on, on that day of King his return. King of kings, Lord of lords, he's the rider on the white horse. The King of kings, Lord of Lords, he's the rider on the white horse. Everybody sing. The King of Kings, Lord of Lords, he's the rider on the white horse. The King of Kings, Lord of Lords, he's the rider. For me was a white horse whose rider is called faithful and true with justice he judges and makes war king of kings lord of lords he's the rider on the white horse the king of kings lord of lords he's the rider on the white horse his eyes are like blazing fire his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one but he himself knows. Everybody stand and sing. King of kings, Lord of lords, he's the rider on the white horse. The King of kings, Lord of lords, he's the rider
that you will return, King of kings and Lord of lords, and that every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. You may be seated. I believe that there is a harsh and a judgmental side to God. There is a harsh... I mean, you read the book of Revelation, the bowls of God's wrath are poured onto the face of the earth. But this is only one aspect of God. There is a, a loving and a forgiving side which really has to be um, uh, shown in balance to the harsh, judgmental side of God. God is willing to forgive us if we will but come to him as children, trusting as a, as a child would trust a, a loving father or mother. And so God is willing to forgive us our sins. He's willing to bestow on us blessing. If we come to him in humility, he will lift us up. He will, he will, um, he will bless us. Oh, may the God of peace himself sanctify you. May your spirit, soul, and body be kept sound. May your lives be wholly blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus. For he who calls you is faithful and is true. He understands you. Oh, when he fills you with peace He's closer to you than breathing Hallelujah And may your hearts be knit together here as one Join to the royal priesthood with Jesus the Son and the mystery of the union of your lives which now begin to grow together through faith in Christ by which we enter in into fullness eternal May the God of mercy himself now anoint you. May your mind be open to the brilliance of his light. May your lives be wholly blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus. For he who calls you is faithful, he's faithful, and he's true. He understands you. Oh, when he fills you with peace, he's closer to you than breathing. Hallelujah. Oh, may the God of peace himself sanctify you Amen A ray of light Across the night, pierces to my heart. A ray of light has taken flight to the stoniness of my heart. The darkness is broken by the brightness of the light. The darkness is broken by the brightness of the light. A ray of light across the night pierces to my heart. A ray of light is taking flight to the stoniness of my heart. 
My shoulder's been for so long It feels funny to be free My shoulder's been for so long It feels funny to be free Ooh. 